In a Dove's Lake Show Battle of California, the Warriors annihilated Los Angeles in record-breaking fashion. On Tuesday night, Golden State became the first team in NBA history to record at least 25 triples, 30 assists, and 10 blocked shots simultaneously in a single game. Now merely one game back of the 8th seed and having won 8 of 9 games with 3 games left, as they get set for another play-in dress rehearsal taking place in Rip City, while the Warriors are playing great basketball, even the convincing performance we're about to look at didn't flash the entirety of their potential. That's coming up much later but film and every top storyline's right around the corner. Only 13.4% of my channel's audience is subscribed according to YouTube, so if you're in the overwhelming majority of people who are watching and not subscribed, I'm not sure why you aren't. Please subscribe. This empty side kick and relocate action gets Clay the dribble pitch from Trace. Thompson draws the attention of four Laker defenders. LeBron should be helping onto Draymond and telling D'Lo to rotate onto his man, and then potentially someone recovers onto D'Lo's man. James opts to instead give Draymond a wide open triple, which Money23 Green has sunk 43% of this season. Still, LeBron doesn't take Green's three point shot seriously, albeit making at least somewhat of a contest following a nice lefty underhand curry dish, but the Draymond Green show nevertheless commences. While James was having defensive lapses, LeBron was carrying offensively like he had to without Anthony Davis. Four of LBJ's game-high 33 were manufactured with a couple of Bronto Ontario Canada faders from the post that he killed my Raptors with in the 2010s, firstly over Wiggins, and secondly over Thompson from around the elbow. However, the first-year professional Brandon Pajemski, as he never is, wasn't intimidated by that patented scoring from LeBron. After Kaminga switches on to Hachimura, then knocks it loose, and Peyton the second outlets, even after not so great of a swing pass, the AirPods extension to gather it he uses to flow into a moving cross. Most impressively, he pulls up in the face of LeBron. This cross screen from Gary Payton II leads to Reeves recklessly recovering to hit Curry on the arm, making this a potential four-point play. Steph counted to four, he bricked the free throw, but still a dope selly, my G. Let's be fair to LBJ, his superstar teammate was actually sleeping during this game, but James gets caught sleeping defensively for yet another time in this opening quarter when Pajemski slips a flare screen for Curry and is left alone for Green to hook him up. A second kick and relocate to generate a hoop of the quarter gets Pods another layup, where he shocks Reeves with a drive to his offhand, bodying through Austin's contact, then finessing. With the Lakers pressing up, the quick twitch Pajemski would get past Torian Prince, rotating Hachimura onto him, unfastening a lane for the lob to trace Jackson Davis. 20 seconds after his bucket, TJD would follow this Dinwiddie outlet, then stick with Hachimura's Euro and swat his layup out of bounds, one of three trace blocks. When Pods gathers this Kaminga kick, Jonathan asks for it back in the post, which D'Angelo Russell falls for and sags off Randon expecting a pass, but it's Pajemski instead just stepping back. Andrew Wiggins as the trailer would recognize Hayes sagging a tad bit and flow into a triple on the catch with a quick switch follow through. 2013's number one ranked high school player out of Huntington Prep working off the dribble displays he's aware the Lakers switching will give him more than enough space to let it fly from distance. With Curry drawing three Laker bodies in transition, trailing is Dre, who's able to flamethrow it over Hayes. Even before CP's post-entry, this split action features Curry beginning the motion of a cross screen, which works as a decoy given it's Paul actually going to be the one setting a cross screen for Curry, Dre's right on time with the swing, and it's Steph hitting. The Lakers switching again fails to work on this play, allowing Curry to get it off, but being fair, it's a bewildering in the face of two defenders off the dribble 26-footer that there's not much you can do about. Post-spinning past Dinwiddie draws Hayes, and what made for one of the plays of the game was this mid-air off-handed behind-the-back wraparound pass to spot Green for his fourth triple of the half, Dime. For what was a career high for threes and a half, five triples made for Draymond in the opening 24, he's the second screener in this stagger action for Thompson. As Dray pops, Jackson Hayes is sagging off, and when Hayes does close out, he leaves space for Green to cleanly release it. Credit to Draymond Green though, the man has been a sniper all season. A Greg Popovich San Antonio Spurs dynasty ingrained in the offense back cut occurs out of this Curry isolation. When a missed Clay's cut, Stefan weaves an improbable pass through four bodies. We talked about how he's an overlooked slasher recently, but when he pulls off passes like he did on Tuesday, it shows you Curry's facilitating is also under-talked about. 
to spot Gary Payton the second for two of GP2, seven in the quarter. This looping floater entry pass from Curry is placed amiably to clear Reeves and Dinwiddie to runway a young glove finish over Rui Hachimura. With LeBron isolating Brandon, Pajemski's fellow rookie gives him a hand, doubling LeBron while blocking off the passing lane to the strong side. This forces the swing to Vincent, but when it's swung around to Prince, this gives Thompson time to navigate a Dinwiddie off-ball screen and contest to Prince triple heavily, and credit to Trace for being in position under the glass. This attack from Dinwiddie draws the help of Jackson Davis, but a great pass from Spencer locates Vincent wide open in the corner, so Clay has to rotate off Prince, which forces Vincent to swing it to Prince, who seems to have a wide open shot. However, taking how much ground AirPods makes up to fly out for a desperate closeout, and it's a miss. Pajemski would drain a transition corner triple, then get right back to defense, funneling Dinwiddie into Jackson Davis, but still making an effort on the attempt by legally going straight up while being in position. Note the impact of the screens from Trace and Clay in this Spain pick and roll to end the third, which free up a CP attack. CP was a game high plus 21, and a 28 on 38 year old ISO sees Paul get past D'Lo going to his left. However, generating two of the game's top plays was the Dubs D. Reeves goes with a Curry-esque left-handed underhand pass, and after Green initially lets Rui slip back door, Draymond chugs over to line up this clean as hell stuff all-time defender, but both the most controversial and incredible play of the game was from Gary Payton II, who gallops from the free throw line to the restricted area to rotate for an utterly unforeseen rejection on Rui, albeit making some contact. Given Hachimura had just gotten blocked by Green, I guess the refs were deceived. Either way, if the official said it was clean, we're calling this a block of the year contender. This would directly lead into three of Clay Thompson's team high 27. Speaking of Thompson, and Clay's been going off lately, as in the month of April, he's averaging 24 points on a 53-44-100 shooting split with a true shooting mark of 67%. Draymond got smacked in the grill off a drive from Austin Reeves, and when speaking on this, Green would say quote unquote, I hit someone in the face, I get thrown under the jail, but when I get hit in the face, they don't see it. Interesting take from Green, and as reported by Anthony Slater of The Athletic, the power forward's questionable tonight in Portland with a right knee contusion. For the rest of the dubs, it's another warm-up for the play-in, but hopefully Draymond will be good to go. If not, it is against a bottom feeder. For those who suit up, however, it must have the feel of a do-or-die, as always. The extra efforts from Wiggins, and the efficient 17 that Andrew posted I wanted to quickly give a mention to. Wiggs had three blocks in this one as well. Wiggins' effort on closeouts were a lot better, and it was a repeatable performance from him in terms of his hustle. Wiggins was also unhesitant when his number was called offensively, which led to his success on that end. However, even after making a season-high 26 three-pointers as a team, Steve Kerr saying post-game that he thought the Warriors didn't even play well speaks to how dangerous this Warriors team will be if by Kerr standards they do play well. How good can the Warriors be this season in your opinion? Compete for free merch with your take down below. Today's shoutout goes to Navek, who says the Warriors need to keep playing and building on their momentum. Momentum is so much more important than people realize. My biggest concern is what Wiggs will look like when he gets back. He always needs a handful of games to find a rhythm, and who knows if that will mess up the current chemistry and momentum. Navek, as you saw, Wiggs coming back didn't mess up anything, but you were right about the first part of your take. Appreciate Navek's comment and every other. Your boy DFlow signing off.